nice to kind of finally be here and have your chance to really put it to rest for good. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, you know, of course, uh, you know, it's going to be an exciting weekend. Uh, you know, playing a team that uh, won the Big Ten Championship. Uh, and, you know, so um, we know what we got to do. We've got we to play well. We've got to control all three phases of the game, pitching, hitting, and, and defense. Like with the way you guys went through last weekend, um, everybody wants to be playing their best ball this time of year. Do you, do you feel like after, after the last weekend showing that you guys are? Well, I think that uh, you know we seem to be uh, doing a lot of things right. Uh, I don't know if we've peaked yet. Uh, this time last year, it seemed like we were on the way down. We kind of peaked when we won the Pac-12 championship and uh, had a, a, a pretty poor showing down in Arizona State last year and then kind of didn't do well in the regionals. And, and this year, I think it's a little different. I think we we feel like we're playing very well. We're doing a lot of things right uh, and just we need to continue to do those things. What about it? Kind of preach the pitch by pitch, game by game, day by day attitude all year. Have you ever had to have any reset moments with this group where you felt like things they were getting ahead of themselves and you had to sort of ground them again a little bit? Well, and not so much about ground them, but uh, you know, sometimes we've come out and we play some Tuesday games where we haven't really played very well against some opposition, opposition we should have beaten probably more handily. Um, but other than that, no, I think that, uh, you know, we've, we're doing some things uh, very well. I like, for example, we, we, get, we lose a game against Arizona State, we come out and we win the next game. So I like the way we've bounced back uh, when we've had some upsets and some, uh, some, some testing moments. What, what, the, what, is, what do you credit with that with? I think it's uh, sticking to the process and trusting the plan. We understand that it's not always going to be perfect. There's there's going to be challenges. You know, what are you going to do when you get get knocked down? Are you going to get back up, or are you going to you know be afraid? And I think we just get back up. We we follow the process and we continue to do what we do well. Any communication this week with Coach Alistair? Obviously, there's some familiarity <laughs> there. I mean, she said that you guys are kind of you know, talk to each other very often. Is yeah. that something that continues this week and you're about to face her? Uh, no, no, sorry, because uh, I'm sure she's busy trying to find out about us and I'm busy finding out about them. And, uh, you know, but uh, Coach Alistair has reached out to me uh, over here the last four years and uh, it's always great to hear from her. They're, uh, they're family, they're personal friends of our family and uh, they've been so very supportive of myself and my family. So it'd be great to see her again, but uh, when we get between the white lines, it's going to be, you know, uh, coach versus coach and team versus team. How would you describe her as, as a coach from your time knowing her and then from being a head coach? Well, she's very intelligent. Uh, obviously a Stanford grad, <laughs> you know, there's some, uh, there's some uh, good, uh, uh, you know, good genes there for sure. Um, but, uh, you know, she is uh, aggressive. Uh, she's always wanting to learn. Um, and uh, she, you know she knows how to play the game. She was a good catcher in her own right. You saw the scenario last year: Big Ten champs coming into Eugene. Any worries that history will repeat itself? Uh, there's always worries. I mean, that can always happen. Uh, but this is a new year. This is a new team. Uh, you know, we're doing things a little bit differently. Uh, we're going to use that as actually motivation. You know, so uh, we know what's expected of us. Uh, we're the number one seed. There's a 16 seed. Paper says we should win, but we know the game doesn't know that. And uh, we need to go out and we need to play the game the right way. We need to. <laughs> Uh, beat them. We need to counter whatever they try to do to us, and uh, and uh, you know just have some fun doing it. Given the success of their pitching, you expect some tight games. And uh, how do you feel like your team has responded in situations like that? Yeah, they have three good pitchers, so they, and and they all contrast each other pretty well. You know, one's a drop ball pitcher, one's a rise ball, and one's a left hander. So they got a lot of tools they can use there uh, defensively against us. Um, but you know, I, I think that uh, we've seen this, that type of pitching all year. And, uh, you know, we started with the last couple of weeks, Dallas Escobedo, and nobody's thrown any better than she is. And, uh, you know, we faced good left-hand pitching, and James Madison, uh, you know, uh, uh, Ford, uh, Jalen Ford was very good. So we've seen different types of pitching all year. Um, so I don't think anything is going to shock us, uh, but we have to be able to make those adjustments uh, quickly. We can't afford to wait because it's only a three-game series. Do you have a plan for your pitching yet in terms of who you're throwing when? Uh, you know, that's a great question. Uh, you know, right now uh, I'm going to start with Sheridan Hawkins, that first game, uh, and see how they handle her rise ball and her other uh, types of pitches, and we'll just go from there. You know, I'm, I'm going to make adjustments as I see fit. Uh, I'll see what they're doing, uh, see how they're swinging the bat, um, and so that should give me a pretty good idea. Well, you, you mentioned you're the one and they're the 16, but you get to this point in the year, what what's the margin really like between a one and a 16? I mean, it seems like it would be pretty close still. It's very thin and I've said that right from the start. I said you know you put a blanket over the top 20 and they're all very close this year. Last year there was obviously a big standout in Oklahoma then there was everybody else. This year you know I don't think we're standing out from anybody. I mean uh, you know there's those top uh, 16, top 20 all very good and it's a team that plays the best on the day. We know that you know that's what the game expects us to do. We can't just come out and say hey we're one they're 16 we're going to win. 
Uh -uh, that ain't going to happen. If, and if we do think that, we're going to be for a rude awakening. It'll be another Nebraska series. What do you attribute Kylie's struggles to lately? Um, she's just thinking too much. You know, uh, that's what she does. Um, you know, she did that last year. You know, got into a little funk and started thinking. Uh, we're trying to get her to be aggressive uh, more in the, in the zone. She's not there to walk. She's there to swing and, and hit the ball hard. So I think we're just trying to free her up a little bit and be a, be a little more uh, aggressive. Do you do anything mentally though with her? Do you talk to her about not thinking as much? Yeah, but well, you know what? When you when you say don't think, you're thinking of something, right? <laughs> so uh, you know, it's just a matter of, of trusting what she does well, and uh, you know, uh, see ball, hit ball. Just it's lots of little things, and you know, we try to tell them to put three things in their helmet, and those are the three things they concentrate on. Everything else just happens. By now, their swings are grooved; they just have to react. And so we got to forget about that, and we just got to go approach. But I like her approaches. I thought her last approach. Uh, 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 Sunday, you know, um, against Wisconsin was a very good at bat. Um, I think this week in practice, she's shown some good things. So we'll see. Have you talked about your seniors and this being their last time playing here at Howfield? No, I never talk about that. Um, you know, I don't. I, I don't want to think about it because I don't like. I don't want to lose them either. You know. So, uh, but you know, it's, uh, every game could be. You know, uh, every game's a big one. Um, so I don't think that uh, you know it's any more different. And, and just like we talked about yesterday as a coaching staff, uh, you know, we've gone out and we've played the top teams in the country in a three-game series. And right now we're playing one of the top teams in the country in a three-game series. So we can't approach it any different. We can't do anything more than what we're capable of doing. We just got to go play well. How do you think, how big has the home crowd been for you guys? Just oh. the atmosphere playing here, the game's already sold out. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's really exciting, and it kind of makes us wish we had a bigger stadium so we could get more people in here because it's going to be electric here. I mean, even though this is a small stadium, it's loud, you know, and uh, it, it gets your blood pumping and uh, gets your adrenaline, and I'm glad they're on our side. A couple months ago, we were talking about the stadium. and How much does this help in that process, like the fact that you guys are number one team, you're hosting twice here in the postseason, and you know, you, you need a new facility. Well, I think it helps a lot. Um, is it, we've attracted a lot of attention with that. I think now if you ask uh, our AD, Rob Mullins, he'll tell you it's number one on his priority list. Um, but, you know, it, it can't happen soon enough. I mean, if, if the timeline's three years, that's too late. We, we need something in, in the next year or two, of course, you know, trying to find a place and get the funding and everything else. But we need something quickly because we need to act while we're, uh, you know, a, a, a number one. Did they ever talk with you about putting the softball field next to PK Park instead of lacrosse and, and and was that a discussion at all or did that just happen without discussing softball as, as being adjacent to PK Park? I was never a discussion with me uh, and uh, you know I was never uh, asked about that um, you know I'm sure it was a football decision you know they had to move that field to allow football to get those fields and uh, that's what they had available uh, right now I know that Pete that uh, uh, Watson Stadium e area is not an option because of parking. They have to have a minimum number of parking uh, spots available. Uh, so it wouldn't happen there. So uh, that's that's off the drawing board. Jamie's been on fire uh, last week, you know, regional MVP. Can you talk about her progression throughout the season? Yeah, I, I think that, uh, you know, I've been waiting for her personally to catch fire. I mean, last year, man, she was hot. Everything she hit was fine in the middle of the barrel. It was coming off the barrel. But, you know, she's been batting 360, 370 without really finding the middle of the barrel. And so to me, that's just uh, tremendous for us, I think, uh, because you know, right now she's finding the middle of the barrel at practice and the games, and I'm excited to see what this weekend's going to bring with her. What do you think she needs to do to stay in that zone against Minnesota? See the ball. Just see the ball and get good pitches to hit. You know, when, when Janie struggles, she just, I think she sees it too big, she jumps off it just a little bit. But if she smooths it out and, uh, you know, she's got the levers there, she should be just fine. We talked about the importance of Nikki Adria and how just how good is she as a freshman? She played more like a veteran. I mean, how hard was it to get her to come here? I mean, it's a player of that caliber. Yeah, actually, it was uh, it was a collaboration of myself uh, and actually um, Coach Dodd, uh, the head coach at UNLV. Uh, you know, we, we got on with the Corona Angels and we liked Nikki straight away. She we thought she had you know great build for a shortstop, uh, good levers for a hitter, um, and she hasn't disappointed us. Uh, what I love about Nikki is that she's not satisfied. She's not satisfied just to have a great freshman year. It's like she wants to be one of the best. And uh, I like that. You know, she's always asking intelligent questions. She, she wants to know how she can get better. Uh, she's really a, a coach's player. I mean, she'd really help 
getting Seal moved over to third really helped you with her, right? Yeah, exactly. And uh, you know, Courtney, we we tried Courtney at uh, third base two years ago, and I think she liked it. And then uh, you know, she uh, had the injury and, and took a year off, and they had to play shortstop for us last year. And and she asked me, hey, coach, I want to move back to third base. And uh, she's made it her own. She's taken it as a challenge. I think because she drops the bunts, she wants to take the bunts away from people. And uh, I just like that about her. She just kind of challenges them to bunt on her, and she's doing a fantastic job. You mentioned Coach Dodd, I mean, Coach Alistair Dodd, Miller. They've all left after getting some notoriety here and kind of had the spotlight on them. What, what do you think has let the, your assistants kind of go on to head coaching gigs? What about this place and this success? Well, I think it's just the way we've turned this around. People think that we're doing something magical here and uh, they want to kind of find a way to get some of it themselves. And so obviously the way to do that is to, is to raid our coaches. Um, hopefully uh, our administration sees that and our administration will say, you know what, well, enough's enough. We need to pay our coaches so that uh, you know, it's comparable to the rest of the country. We should be we should be up with the top five country, uh, top five coaches in the country as far as salaries go. Uh, we should be somewhat uh, like baseball. You know, um, we're way below uh, what other people's salaries are. What kind of gap do you think that is? Well, you know, I don't know. I don't know what their salaries are, but uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's around the 50 percent. You scared baseball coach. You scared that some other folks are gonna come after Spencer and whatnot. And Jimmy this offseason? I've, I've already know I already know people are after Coach uh, Colatus already. Okay. Uh, you know people uh, you know, are making overtures and uh, to him and okay. and uh, so you know that's part of the game. It's part of what it is. But I'd like to see us try and keep some of these uh, assistant coaches a little bit longer. How do, you, how do you handle that as, as a head coach when you get an assistant that says, "Hey, I got an offer." What's that conversation like? You know, it's 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 very it's very touchy because you know the first time when I when I got a, someone from Minnesota called me. I didn't know that Jess was wanting to look so early, and uh, you know I was kind of like, oh my gosh, I don't want to lose her. But now it's like, you know, this is going to happen, and it's good for the program. It shows that the program uh, is doing some things right, and that people want that in their programs. Uh, and so, uh, as uh, someone told me, uh, I think it was uh, um, Coach. Uh, I can't remember her name now, but uh, you know, Coach said that uh, it's like a coaching tree. You get a coaching tree out there and it just starts spreading, and uh, I think that's true. It's uh, you know our Oregon name out there and it spreads, so it is in some ways a good thing. I didn't even see batting practice, so I don't know if you ever like you say you mentioned Minnesota's got a left hander, they got a rise ball, drop ball. Do you ever the girls bat against uh, the women bat against your own pitchers, and if they do, how do they get hockey? Well, yeah, I mean, we, actually, we hit Hawkins pretty well in scrimmages, so, but, you yeah, know, uh, but other times she dominates us. But, uh, you yeah, know, we don't have the left hander, but uh, myself and Coach Roberts, uh, our volunteer pitching coach, uh, you know, I'll throw the rise balls and he throws the drop balls, so we'll simulate both of those. Um, you know, it's not quite the same. It's never the same as in a game, but at least they're getting to see those types of pitches and spin. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you.